Hello class, uh, this is Dr. Hux. We're into uh, module 11 now uh, for advanced educational statistics. And uh, before I talk about this, I do want to say something. We're getting down to the end of this project, your course project. So really, you need to be taking some of the things we've done in these assignments, maybe most all of these things we've done in the assignments, and, and start laying out a complete chapter four. And uh, I put another chapter four in this lesson somewhere so you can look at it on the module uh, in Blackboard. So uh, there's some things there, but you need to start outlining your chapter four and then taking the uh, things that we've done in this course and putting them appropriately in those places. So you'll have you'll have that thing ready to go. Let's not wait for the last minute. I'm looking forward to reading these and uh, looking at your analysis of data to uh, so you can write your findings. And that's what this lesson is about here. We're going to do, uh, we're going back to chapter nine and we're going to do an ANOVA repeated measures. That's probably as important a test as uh, any of the others. And the course project is going to be to write your findings that's sort of a summary. You can call it findings and summary. Some people do. Some people call it the summary, conclusion of the chapter, but it's the findings. And uh, that's uh, the last thing in uh, chapter four. And uh, so we're going to do those two things. Let's see what we've got here going on. Let's see if we can get this thing. Our objectives for this lesson are to determine when it is appropriate to run an ANOVA repeated measures test, verify that the data meet the criteria uh, for ANOVA repeated measures. There's only one, and that's um, Monchley's test of sphericity. Uh, order an ANOVA repeated measures test, interpret the test results, resolve the hypotheses, uh, write an appropriate abstract. We've been doing that long enough now that it should come second nature to you comprehend the versatility of the repeated measures design and present the findings section of the course project and that shouldn't take very long for you to do that's that's a pretty short paragraph or two well it's more than one paragraph but it's pretty short let's talk about the note ANOVA repeated measures and uh, to follow a variable over time you would run an ANOVA repeated measures, especially if you had more than two times, because if you were going to compare two of these, uh, time one and time two, you could just do a regular ANOVA. But let's see what's happening here. Uh, actually, you would do a t-test, a paired t-test, excuse me. ANOVA repeated measures. The ANOVA repeated measures is a cross between the paired t-test and the ANOVA. Uh, whereas the paired t-test follows a variable over two time points, the pre-test and the post-test, uh, the paired t-test is a measurement of the pre-test, a measurement of the post-test. The uh, ANOVA repeated measures, uh, where the paired t-test follows a variable over two time points. Now, the thing about that is you can do that over two, but an ANOVA with repeated measures can follow it over three or more time periods. So you, if you have measurements and you have treatments even in between and you have different measurements over time, you can compare these by repeated measures ANOVA just like you could a, a repeated measures t-test or paired samples t-test. ANOVA repeated measures is only concerned with comparing the data gathered at each time point. It is numerically blind to the placement of treatments. In other words, you could have this design where at time one, uh, the variable suggested this level of performance, whatever it happens to be. Then you could have treatment here, the little brown uh, square in there. Then you could measure time two, and then you could, without any further treatment, go on down to time three. Uh, let's see. You could have this happens often a design where you have three time levels and you have treatments in between each one of the time levels. Uh, the statistic doesn't care what you do in between. It's just going to measure what happens at time one, time two, and time three. Or you could have a time one. I don't know what good this would do. I've never seen anything like this before in actuality, but it could be done. So I guess they put it in there. An over-repeated measures assess continuous variable 
over three or more time points. Time one compared to time two. And then you're going to have time three entered in this thing. So you're going to compare time two to time three. And guess what? You're going to compare time three and time one. So you have those three comparisons. That sounds like a Tukey post hoc test or something, doesn't it? Well, that's what it's kind of like. Now, for you to do this assignment, you're going to have to do uh, exercises 9-2-A and 9-6-A, uh, I believe. I'm going to give you a uh, guide to go by here, a template, if you will, uh, to do this. So you won't have to guess, again, about what you put where, and uh, you can just do run the after you see how to run the test you run it you get all these answers and this thing goes on for a couple pages and and that's about it uh, as a matter of fact here's what the data will look like here's that mostly test of sphericity here's the results for that here's the test of within subjects effects and each of those means something but if you follow the template you'll know what they mean and if you if you watch the video you will know what they mean. As a matter of fact, you're going to watch a video, Sage Company video here. It's a really good one, 6 minutes, 21, 6 point, uh, 21. And uh, then this is the same. It's not a video, but it will tell you how to do it. It's written out so that you see the screenshots on how to run the, this uh, repeated measures test. So that's what this is about here. Now let's talk about the findings. The findings of chapter four. See, you're at the end now. You you completed your analysis of the data. You you've got that finished, and now you're going to write the findings. Now the findings are just like they used to say on Dragnet. Sergeant Friday would say, "Just the facts, ma'am. You don't add anything. You don't try to interpret anything. You don't editorialize anything." Uh, this subsection uh, should summarize the answers to the main research questions and hypotheses. So you're going to summarize. If you had four hypotheses, you're going to summarize that in this section. You're not going to write a, another dissertation in here. It's, you're just going to summarize that. And you're not going to say anything that's not been found out in Chapter 4. You're not going to add anything to it. You're not going to subtract anything from it. And this section serves as a transition to Chapter 5. Uh, where these results will be discussed in detail. That's when you get to editorialize, when you get to Chapter 5. You can talk about what you think and, and what you think the results uh, indicated. This subsection should orient the reader to Chapter 5. In other words, at the end of your findings, you can, some people even write a summary statement besides that, and they prepare someone for Chapter 5 saying, we're going to discuss these. It's only a couple sentences it takes to do it. And you can see that when you look at some of these. So what are you going to do? You're going to summarize the results of the test for the reader uh, in their orders of significance. Uh, you're not going to add any new information or analysis should be included. You're not going to do anything other than tell about it. And the goal of the summary is to summarize the findings for the reader in one or two paragraphs. Then you're going to add a transition to the topics in Chapter 5. And uh, Here's your assignment sheet, and let's talk about this a minute. First thing you're going to do here is complete uh, problems 9.2 and 9.6a, and up here at the top, you see exercise response template. That makes it much easier for you. It just it leaves you, and, and I'm not trying to make this difficult for you, it's an experience, because if you're like me, when you get ready to do a statistic, you have to go back and look in the book and say, hey, what am I going to do here? I can't remember. I know this is probably going to be the test I'll run, but I need to look at this again. So save your notes and uh, make sure that you save Kronk's book, because it's the Bible as far as I'm concerned. Then you'll notice that uh, we're going to talk about the summary, the course project. These two uh, pieces here are uh, findings and a summary. I pulled that out of somebody's dissertation. It's a findings and summary section. I think in this one they have the findings and then have this summary transition. You, you don't have to do that. You can put it all together. And then I've got a chapter four here by Kirkman, the whole chapter. 
And next time, I'm going to give you several chapter fours to look at because you're going to have to be putting together a chapter four in past tense, in APA style, and in perfect grammar and punctuation and syntax. And you really need to get a second reader to look at what you write before you turn this in to me as your final. And you'll want to do that because that's a learning experience, too. When you do this dissertation, you ain't going to be able to do it all by yourself. You're going to ask someone to help you with it. So might as well get over that now. So the course project, you're going to do that, the summary. And that's what it's all about. Good luck.